All right, I'm going to talk about uh, two portions of Scripture that prove conclusively that prayer is part of your salvation. In fact, it is the moment of salvation. All right? And that's why these little devil worshipers want to get people to not pray. Just, uh, you know, get all nice and Jesuitical and just imagine, you know, believe, contemplate, contemplative of uh, salvation, you know, just imagine and believe that He died on the cross and you don't have to pray, you don't have to ask for it. Okay? I'm going to show you that that's a lie. How would you prove this? Okay? They say, show me anywhere in Scripture where it says prayer, you know, is necessary for salvation. You take into Romans 10, you know, through all the verses there, 8 through 13, and they go, yes, it says call, but that doesn't mean call. It means believe. <laughs> you know, okay, show me more scriptures. Okay, well, how about we look at the opposite? You can see man praying to God in Romans 10 there, but how about God hearing the prayers of somebody for salvation? Acts chapter 10, let's go there. Beginning in verse 30. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Who heard his prayer? God. Was Cornelius a saved man? No. Then why is God answering his prayer? And what happens? What's the answer to his prayer that he's seeking? Verse 32. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So what was it that uh, led Cornelius to the point of salvation? And I understand this is transitional stuff. I understand that. But here you have a Gentile and he's praying to God and God hears his prayer. And sends Peter and says, here, and he gets saved. Keep reading the story there in Acts chapter 10. He gets saved. But it all started with his prayer. Well, you know, I can, I can just hear a little hyper dispensation. Well, you, but, you, but you see, there's different types of salvation. Okay, okay. You want an even better one? Turn to six, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Not 6 Corinthians. Okay, there's only two books. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. It's fun, you know. I, I, I have grown over the years to enjoy taking down false prophets um, because, number one, I don't like false prophets at all, just as Jesus Christ didn't like the false prophets of his day and Paul didn't like the false prophets of his day. Um, but secondly, I know that by taking down false prophets, I'm helping sheep to get away from these liars, you know. It'd be kind of like if I'm a shepherd out in a field someplace and I'd see a wolf coming through the woods to try and get my sheep that I'm supposed to be shepherding over, and I take out a rifle and I go, bam, and I see that wolf drop over dead. That would bring great joy to me. So it brings me great joy to bring down these false prophets. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Verse 2. For he saith, God, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I secured thee behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation uh oh I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I secured thee mm -hmm. you see how it works God hears when a sinner calls to him and says Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do they get saved just because of their own action or something? No. You get saved because you cry out to God and God says, Okay, I'm going to secure you. Secure means help. God gives you the gift of salvation when you call upon Him. 
I'm going to tell you right now, if you have fallen for these lying false prophets that are saying to people, calling means believing. If you've fallen for one of them, and I really don't like to even name these lying false prophets because they get great joy out of that. And they can, you know, it, it just cracks me up. Then they're like, oh, we're being persecuted. Oh, he's causing so much division. Brian, Brother Brian, I respect some of what he's done, but he calls for, you know, he, he makes so much division in the body of Christ. You know, whatever, you know. <laughs> I just try to preach the Word of God as it is and stuff. And these other people are coming along and saying, call doesn't mean, you know, call doesn't mean call, it means belief. You know, prayers of work, you know, and it's so fun too. They say prayers of work and it's like, okay, where's the New Testament say that? <laughs> where does, where does anybody, you know, you see some guy's going to call out to the Lord. It's like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Don't pray. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's common sense people, you know, read the plain English, but you know, getting back to what I'm saying though, I've heard thee in a time accepted in the day of salvation. Have I secured thee? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And, you know, Satan will help these false prophets out there that are, you know, they're going to try and twist it. Well, they, actually, that doesn't mean, you know, they'll try to twist the thing. Plain English people. God hears the prayer of a sinner when they come to him in a repentant, broken spirit. And they say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I need to be saved. God, please save me. I mean, somebody come out and they do that. They're truly broken. They're just like, at the end of their, their life, they're about ready to blow their brains out. And they say, God, if you're real, please, God, save me. I need to be saved, God. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Please, God, save me. The Lord looks down and says, well, you're praying. Sorry. If you'd have just believed, I would have saved you. But you open your mouth to pray to me. I'm not listening. You know, it's like uh, God's up there like some kind of little... little uh, whatever, schoolboy or something. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> what kind of a warped image? You know, he looks down. You can only believe. Only believe and that's all that there is. If you pray or, you know, if there's if there's real strong conviction of sin there and, and repentance, and th I'm not going to save you. <laughs> you know, <sighs> idiocy. So please don't don't fall for this nonsense, you know, these people, oh, you don't, you know, prayers of belief, or prayers of work and all this stuff. Whatever. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for watching.